what's going on everyone so today is another day where we got to go through all of the cards that they talked about on stream the other day they really dove into the villainy side of things i've mentioned this a few times but over the past few days slash week and a half we've had a ton of heroism spoilers and we're really waiting to see what's going to be done with the battle droids exploit and other things like that so we're going to see if we get a little bit more insight into that today we got a lot of spoilers to talk about and a brand new leader so i am pretty excited big thank you to my patrons over on patreon guys i say this every single time but i have been chatting with them playing some games and we've been having a good time over there Second thing is, I have a TCG player link in the description down below. Be sure to use it for any of your set three cards when it does come out. But let's talk about the first one. And as the brand new leader, Count Dooku. I'm excited for this one, okay? This, to me, looks like the strongest or at least the most potential out of the leaders we've seen so far between Obi-Wan, Padme, Ahsoka. I suppose Grievous is up there for me as well. But Command Villainy, face of the Confederacy is a subtitle, by the way. I was waiting for that. Uh, signature look of superior to be cited on the on the Count Dooku art. Action, exhaust this leader, play a separatist card from your hand. It gains exploit one. So essentially what this is, if you decide to use Count Dooku's action, you can defeat a unit you control in order to get a two cost reduction towards a unit that has the separatist tag. And this is a separatist card, not just unit. And this is very important because any sort of separatist event or upgrade could also be played with this action for two less if you choose to defeat a unit or, um, you know, battles or token, whatever you want to defeat that you control. On the flip side, he flips for seven resources as a 5-9. Absolute chonky boy over here. 5-9, very, very high toughness, even more so than Vader. Force, Separatist, and Sith are his tags. And we have Overwhelm as a ability and on attack, the next Separatist card you play gains Exploit 3, meaning that you can potentially defeat three units in order to make it six cost cheaper. So this flip side, honestly, 5-9, decent body, Overwhelm, sure. I'm not excited about this, okay? I don't think the on-attack trigger is all that impressive. To me, this is just like a whatever portion of the card. Realistically, all I care about is the front side, and it's very similar to New Han in that you're caring about the resource cost reduction you get on the front side, but you don't really care about the flip side. It's just kind of like an added little bonus when you get to it. Now, I've seen a lot of comparisons to New Han. I don't think that it's nearly as strong, okay? When I saw New Han, I said it's going to be the most broken leader from set two, and I think it's the absolute strongest leader that we have in general outside of potentially Boba Fett. That's, that's kind of what my initial impression was, and I don't think I was wrong about that. Uh, it's definitely like top two, top three leader in the game at the current moment. You could consider it competing with, you know, Sabine, Boba, and Old Han, things like that that are up there. This card, while it can potentially give you two cost reduction on any Separatist card, that is quite a few different restrictions. One, New Han doesn't require a Separatist card. It's any card in your deck any card uh any unit card i should specify any unit card in your deck and that's pretty important because 80 percent of your deck is usually units now that is an advantage in terms of events if there are a lot of separatist events but generally speaking separatist card doesn't actually mean that you're getting a lot more options it's usually going to be a limiting factor rather than including events and stuff being a bonus but the fact that han can still play things like poe dameron and and things like uh, Luke Skywalker or, or Crate Dragon, even though they don't have like a Rebel tag or maybe they, they don't all have the Resistance tag or they don't have all the Underworld tag or whatever it is, is a huge advantage towards Han. However, this can be potentially really strong because although you have to defeat a unit, we do have a lot of random tokens running around now with set three. So if there are a lot of cards that are able to produce cheap tokens, or maybe there's just a big payoff that you want to get down something for two cheaper, Maybe it's got some damage on it or whatever, and you want to get rid of it because it's just going to die from like a boss action or whatever. You can get rid of it and get a cheaper discount on something else. Well, that could be relevant, especially since there probably is going to be a lot of separatist cards that are expensive. The other thing that I want to consider is if we're kind of ramping into separatist cards, they need to be cards that are actually relevant. 
And what I mean by that is a lot of the separatist cards that we've seen, Hailfire Droy, like tanks and things like that, like the villainy side of things with exploit, aren't actually that powerful for their resource cost. It's because they can be exploited out that they're a little bit weaker. And so getting a resource cost reduction on them uh, isn't really going to be all that relevant, right? And you can't play the likes like Reinforcement Walker with this. So we do need to see something that's big, that's powerful, that is a payoff for this. So we'll have to see on both sides of this. Are we going to get Separatist cards that are big and powerful? Are they going to be things that are relying on exploit? Because if they are, they're probably not going to be as powerful as you think they are. Are we going to see a lot of Battle Droid setup? The other thing to mention is this doesn't damage your units when it gets a resource cost reduction, which also is pretty relevant in comparison to New Han. I think this is a lot weaker than New Han, but I do think this is definitely an above average leader with the expectation that we will see some support for this payoff and support for this setup. So I'm looking forward to Count Dooku, definitely my favorite one of the ones that we've seen from Twilight of the Republic. Next up though, and I know a lot of people have been talking about this card as well because it's their favorite art. So, you know, the Midwraith Padme definitely, definitely is a lot of people's favorite. So we have a two class upgrade on top of things, cunning, when played attached unit can't be attacked this phase and gets plus two plus zero. Oh. Pretty straightforward. This plus two plus zero oh is a pretty powerful buff. We've seen it with like Jetpack, for example, or Hotshot Blaster. The fact that it can't be attacked this phase means that it can still be defeated by takedown, still to be defeated by, um, you know, power of the dark side vanquish whatever removal you have generally speaking assuming that i could hit it before fell the dragon also probably turns that on because it gives plus two plus zero here it can't be attacked unless it has sentinel which means that um you can't really put this on let's say an obi-wan or a whatever sentinel you have on the battlefield to like shift the damage away from it to set up for like the next turn which is a little bit unfortunate in that case however this does seem interesting to me i don't know how relevant it's going to be we have things like surprise strike which guarantee you additional damage i know it's set for a single time we have things like jetpack which kind of makes it so that the attached unit can't be attacked this phase like if you think about it jetpack gets plus two plus oh at a temporary shield and so it's going to give you that option of well you can still be attacked but it's going to probably kill that unit. So it's not going to be able to really be attacked this phase because people are going to want to wait for that shield to go away. Not to mention that you could also just attack with it and consume that shield. So to me, this card just looks pretty bad. Like I, I don't, I'm not really sure how relevant this one's going to be. Again, immediately I look at Jetpack and I'm like, well, why would you ever want to use this card over um, Jetpack? And the only thing I can think about is if you want to place it on space units. Like this can be placed on space units, which is a little bit funny, um, but jetpack cannot. So if you want to play it on space units, then go for it. If you don't care about space units or particularly don't have a ton of space units in your deck, then play jetpack like 10 times out of 10. Uh, it just to me is way, way better. On another note, we have another card in Rush Clovis, a brand new rare four cost ground unit, cunning villainy, three, five separatist official, Raid 2, and if the defending player controls no ready resource resources, create a battle droid token. So first things first, I immediately thought of Count Dooku when I saw Rush Clovis, um, or rather, I thought of Rush Clovis when I saw Count Dooku because Rush Clovis was released um, or spoiled a little bit sooner than him. If you're able to like turn one, play a battle droid token, turn two, get down a Rush Clovis, and maybe even play another one resource play, or maybe turn one, you're able to go ahead and... Um, I don't know, do something else where you're creating multiple units and then you're able to exploit out multiple things in the following turn. Maybe it'll exploit this out early where your opponent's, you know, reusing all the resources every single turn. Attacking for five points of damage and creating a battle droid token is really going to set you up for the future. Like, can you imagine you create another battle droid token, which allows you to ramp into even further things every turn with Count Dooku? That can get really insane really quickly. A five point attacker with four resources is really impressive. Um, unfortunately, it has three points of power on defense, but that can be worked around. Um, and I do think the on attack trigger is actually pretty powerful. Again, we'll have to see how exploits and, and, and some other things work with these battle droid tokens, or if we can get enough separatist synergies. And I keep saying that because we've only seen a small portion of set three so far. But if we're able to leverage these battle droid tokens, whether it's with Grievous and putting Sentinel on things or pumping them up, or whether it's with 
exploiting with Count Dooku or whatever it is, I could see this being a very, very powerful card. It also has the official tag, so that might be relevant. Let's say you wanted to play, I don't know, Emperor's Royal Guard or uh, something like that in your deck, then you can get a 3-4 Sentinel by playing Rush Clovis. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I like this card a lot, and I, I think it will potentially see some play. You could even ECL it out if you happen to be playing like Boba Fett, for example. I don't know if it'll fit in Boba Fett because I don't really see it being like a Boba Fett card. You really want to be doing something immediately when it comes down into play, but it does have five attack on, on attack. So maybe, maybe. Next up, we got the rest of the villainy spoilers. And mind you, there are a lot here. So I think there's like seven, eight cards. The first one we're going to talk about is Sit cost ground unit Kalani in command villainy five seven separate destroyed on attack you may choose another unit if you have the initiative you may choose up to two other units instead and you give each chosen unit plus two plus two for this phase so essentially it's kind of like a weird um what's it called steadfast battalion where comes down you get to attack and you do something plus two plus two now in steadfast battalion's case it was one resource cheaper it had two less points of toughness, but you had to control your leader, which was a little bit of a tricky, uh, I suppose, risky thing. Here's the thing. This card is pretty absurd with ECL. If you just think about what this is able to do, it's most likely going to be able to kill something or at least deal some major damage uh, to something. It has the same stat line as like a Darth Vader, and you've seen how Darth Vader can really end up killing a lot of different things when he comes down, even though he comes down at seven resources. So there's a good chance this guy's going to be able to kill something when he comes down. So you kill something, you give two units. Let's see you have the initiative. You, have, you give two units plus two plus two. Now you'll have to have two other units if you like flip your leader, which most of the times your leaders will be down by this point. You can give your leader plus two plus two and another unit plus two plus two. This could be, be a really big swing of damage. If you have battle droid tokens, you can give those units plus two plus two. Like there's a lot of different things you can do with this. I think this is actually a potentially pretty powerful ECL option. And again, I always think about that when I think of a command card, but any on attack trigger really I'm looking at, this card looks pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, I think that we're going to have enough units to be able to give two other units uh, plus two plus two. And it's going to have a stat line where it'll probably survive an ambush attack and kill something at the same time. I will say, if you're only giving one unit plus two plus two, I'm a little bit less excited for this, but I think that we're going to be able to give, first off, have multiple units, and if you're playing this card, there's a good chance that you'll play around trying to get the initiative, and so getting the initiative and being able to trigger this is something that will potentially be possible. This might be a really great kind of finisher for the game. Next up, we've got a brand new space unit. Three cost space unit, Magna Guard Wing Leader, Command Villainy, 3 4, Separatist Vehicle Fighter. Attack with a droid unit, then attack with another droid unit. Use this ability only once each round. That's the action, by the way. That's the action. It's a three resource, three four, Separatist Vehicle. That's the baseline. This seems imperative, like one of the best units in the Separatist decks. It's not a droid, which is important, but it does have the Separatist tag. Um, you can attack with droid units. This just seems like a really solid statted unit to where if you're trying to play a separatist deck, you're probably going to want to be playing this card because it just has a good stat line for space. Um, we've seen like Punishing One come up a lot in set two where a lot of decks are just play, kind of playing Punishing One because of the good, good stat line. Um, but this action is going to be really nice because it's not going to exhaust the Magna Guard and it's going to be able to give you the option to attack in with well, if you have other droid units than those, but also with your droid tokens before they actually just get killed, which is going to be pretty massive. I'm really, really excited for this. Uh, action cheating is really nice. And this has a stat line where it's going to be able to survive most likely. So I think this could give a lot of value to your separatist decks. You're going to have a lot of droids naturally, but also you can kind of focus on building out with some more droids as well. And this just seems like a nice little addition to that. So I like this card. I think this is a pretty nice one. Um, I don't think it's going to be like absurd or anything. But it is going to be one of those cards that seems to be really important to be on your curve. Something more like a, a fleet lieutenant where it's not like the card is broken and it's just going to change the whole game. But it just does so much for that deck specifically that you're going to want it. Next up, we've got a new ground unit, two cost ground units, Vigilance Villainy, Wartime Trade Official, 1-3 Separatist Official, when defeated, create a battle droid token. So 1-3... When defeated, create a battle droid token. Really not that exciting, but it can give you some value. Well, again, 
just think about this in like Count Dooku. You play this guy on turn one. Let's say you have another two resource play. Well, guess what? You exploit this guy out, you get another two resource play down. Now you have a battle droid token and a two resource play. Next turn, you go exploit the battle droid token, you get a two resource discount. Now you're playing, well, guess what? A five resource play on turn two. That's pretty massive. Um, heck, you don't even have to do that on turn one. Like you can go wartime trade official on turn one, turn two, just play a five resource play by exploiting this guy. You don't even have to do another turn, like a uh, two drop on turn one alongside wartime trade official. This guy seems like potentially an important piece to the decks that are looking to exploit a lot. Any card that seems like a reasonably statted card that could potentially create multiple bodies for you while you're doing your thing seems a little bit more exciting to me. Uh, it's not necessarily a powerful card. It will just straight up die to Battlefield Marines and things like that if they have them, which is very possible. But it seems like a nice setup piece for the early game. These are the types of cards that you really need in order for cards like Count Dooku to really work. Next up, we've got Calculated Magna Guard, three cost ground unit and Vigilance Villainy, three, four separate destroyed when played and when a friendly unit is defeated, it gains Sentinel for this phase. This seems pretty interesting to me. Three resource, three, four is a reasonable stat line. Again, that's kind of what we see on average. Um, it's not extremely exciting, but it is an average stat line. Uh, this getting Sentinel probably will be able to survive at least an attack when it comes down. Like on turn one, most people don't have a four power unit to get through calculating that and guard. So it probably will be able to survive that singular attack and maybe trade off. So maybe it'll prevent some damage. And again, when played and when a friendly unit is defeated, so you just give it self sentinel when you play it. There's a separatist tag and has the droid tag. It's not exciting again, but friendly units will probably be defeated all the time because you're going to be exploiting things. You're going to have one, one droid tokens. So this getting sentinel isn't going to be uncommon. It's just a matter of, is that actually good enough? And I'm not sure it is, but it might just be because of the tags, because of you needing to survive because you're trying to exploit out bigger things. So we will have to go ahead and see. Next up, we got OM series officer, two resource ground unit in aggression villainy, two one separatist droid when defeated, deal two damage to a base. Pretty straightforward, not exactly like impressive by any means. Two one stat line for two resources is absolutely atrocious, but this seems to be potentially a different direction than I thought exploit was going to go not that it's not i'm not that i'm saying that this is now the new direction but you could do something where you're defeating these early units just to get in some extra damage even though it's a two one you could still exploit things with it maybe you get in for two points of damage you exploit it out then you get two more points of damage on opponent's base and you're just trying to race like you're playing an aggro deck you get something down early you're trying to hit in for good chunks of damage this is where i see this card kind of valuable outside of that I would not be playing a two resource two one that deals two damage to a base when defeated. That's basically a reckless gunslinger and a reckless gunslinger hasn't really all been amazing. And part of the reason why it's even played in the first place is because you could smuggle it out later on in the game and this, you cannot do so. So maybe we could see some sort of aggression based high damage deck where you're trying to hit their base with the exploits and, and just hit their base in general and get an advantage that way. That could be potentially the direction this card goes. Next up, we've got Squadron of Vultures, six cost space unit in aggression villainy, five, four separate destroyed vehicle fighter, exploit three. This could potentially be free if you defeat three different units. Now there's nothing exciting about this card in terms of stat line or anything like that. A, a six resource space unit that's a five, four. It's honestly pretty mediocre stat line, but that's what I've mentioned with these exploit cards is usually they're like one to two cost more than you expected them to be because you can potentially discount them like four, fives or four, six, eight or whatever it is. And this card is exactly that way. Um, I would not be paying six resources for this five, four space unit in any deck right now. However, if I can get this for two resources or for free, now we might have something on our hands. I'm not sure. These common exploit options to me are a lot less exciting because when I'm thinking about the setup that's going to be required for this card, I really want something bigger and more impactful. A uh, free 5-4 alongside another play is just not good enough, as weird as that sounds, if you're defeating three other units. And that's assuming your opponent didn't interact with anything and you're not deploying actual cards into the battlefield. So to me, this is a little bit on the weaker side. We will see if we have enough ways to get 
cards out there maybe this is going to be a playable option but to me um these common payoffs for exploit not good enough to exploit them next up we got asajj ventress however ground units in aggression villainy two four four separate assist this is something that we saw earlier with the unique arts but it has exploit two and on attack if you attack another separatist unit this phase this unit gets plus three plus zero for this phase this one i could see being pretty powerful Again, you could play this for free. So like turn one, you play something, turn two, um, you play something, turn three, you get a four drop down, you get a Saj down by exploiting her out. And attacking as a five, four for four resources is pretty good. But her stat line is a little bit on the weaker side. If you're on the defense, it's basically gonna die to like any four resource play in the entire game and not trade meaningful damage for the most part into it. Uh, and that's gonna be pretty bad. So that's something you do have to keep in mind. But um, if you're able to attack first, you don't need to attack with Asajj in order to trade off. Like, let's say you have a battle trade token and you're like, man, I really want to attack with this first in order to get in some bonus damage with Asajj. If she dies, then I only lose out one point of damage because I would have only attacked for two if I attacked with her first. So I'm going to go ahead and attack with this battle trade token. She just gets plus three, plus oh for this phase on attack. So um, uh, you do have to attack with her um, in order to get that plus three, plus oh, but it's not like you're not going to have that on defense either. So if they decide, let's say, I don't know, to um, sit back and, and ambush something later on, then she's going to have that plus three plus zero for that phase. So for the rest of the time, they can't interact with it too much. So if they try to have to, or they're trying to buff something up or whatever it is, then they will have to deal with that as well. I think this could potentially be pretty strong. Again, if we have some sort of exploit aggressive deck, then maybe this is an addition to that. We also saw Darth Maul previously. This is a five cost ground unit in aggression villainy. Five, six, four Sith. And this unit can attack two units instead of one. It's a legendary. One of our legendaries here. Two units instead of one is pretty crazy. Especially when you're considering all the clone trooper tokens and battle droid tokens that could potentially be in set three. Being able to kill off two of them instead of one of them is pretty impactful since he will not die. You can also just kill off, you know, two units earlier on into the game with this guy. It'll probably die, but at least you kill off two units. This to me seems more of a controlling card than an aggressive card. Um, like you can't hit base and a unit. That's something I would have loved to see. As far as I can tell, um, it says attack two units, not like a base, uh, not like this unit can make two attacks instead of one and all things deal damage at the same time. If it could, I would be much more excited about this card because you hit the base, hit a unit, hit the base, hit a unit, and that could be massively game swinging. As it stands, I actually don't think this card is that insane yet. Uh, maybe the force tag could be relevant for Darth Maul, but I see this more as a controlling card. Try to control the board of uh, battle droid tokens, clone tokens, or whatever it is. And to me, that just doesn't seem as strong as some other options that we have. Next up, we have a five cost ground unit, cunning villainy, tactical droid commander, four, four separatist droid with exploit two. And whenever you play another separatist unit, you may exhaust a unit that costs the same or less than the plane unit. This seems pretty interesting. Now remember, it's exploit two, so you could potentially play this for one resource. Um, it's a four, four separatist droid, pretty bad stat line for five resources. But once again, as I said with exploit cards, they usually seem to be one or two cost more than the usually would be for that stat line and what their effect would be like this i would expect to be a four cost unit generally speaking without the exploit two tagged on now this i don't know if it's worth it okay so you can't like play tokens and exhaust things that would make this a lot more interesting like if you could create tokens exhaust things i'd be like wow Maybe you have some sort of tempo play or some sort of option where you're able to keep your units alive because you just play tokens and you, you just exhaust your opponent's units and that could be pretty oppressive. This requires you to play other separatist units and on top of that, it must cost the same or less than the play unit in order for you to go ahead and exhaust something. I'm not a huge fan of this card. It is interesting and maybe the exploit 2 is going to make it in a deck where you have a lot of fodder and you just want to get down things early. But to me, right now, not a huge fan of Tactical Droid Commander. Next up, we got Zero the Hut. Five resource ground units in Cunning Villainy. A 2-8 Underworld Hut. When played for each opponent, you may exhaust a unit that player controls. And on attack for each opponent, you may exhaust a resource that player controls. So, five resource, 2-8. Pretty bad. Not a fan of that stat line. We've seen five resources, 6-6. Six, six. Heck, Poe Dameron can just straight up kill Zero the Hut, which is crazy to me. Um... 
exhausting unit when he's played could potentially be a nice tempo play exhausting a resource on attack now that is a lot more interesting now we've seen if you fought against like old han for example kind of trying to play around the ability for han to use his action or for han to attack to disrupt their turn seven or our re seven resource plays or whatever your opponent's doing getting rid of a resource can really mess up their overall curve and their hand structuring because unlike other games you get two cards a hand and you can kind of oh i'm gonna play this i'm gonna play this i'm gonna use up all my resources and by exhausting a resource that could really mess something up i don't think it's worth it though the two eight body's not good enough the five cost for that not good enough and the when play trigger not good enough just to do the on attack trigger overall next up and last up we have the last event one cost event cunning villainy wartime profiteering look at cards from the top of your deck equal the number of units that were defeated this phase draw one and put the others on the back on the bottom of your deck in a random order this seems pretty unplayable to me i know one cost event it uh does allow you to get some card selection but you need to defeat a good amount of units in order for this to even be good like three to four because then you get to look at the top three to four units um or three to four cards at the top of your deck and you get to choose one okay now in terms of normal games you could easily just trade with the units and then look at the top two cards and then draw one remember you need to draw or have more than just one unit to feed this phase in order to give this any value right um realistically because yes you can look at the top card but there's gonna be a good portion of the time when you're just gonna keep that on top and draw that one um and you can't really actually change the the past cards of your deck like if you look at the top two at least if the second card down it's not something you want you can put it on the bottom um and the same thing goes with the first card of course but getting this for one not a huge fan not a huge fan if you get three four units defeated maybe you can do something with it but to me these like drawing a card effects really are only good later on in the game and when you smuggle them out or when you're in a heavy control deck and this doesn't seem like something you're going to be doing in a heavy control deck normally i suppose you could defeat your opponent's units and then draw a card by searching so maybe that's the place where it could be but i'm not a huge fan of overall this mechanic this type of card in star wars unlimited not because it's like not played well or anything but because it's just so weak for what we're doing inside the game but overall that's gonna be all the ability cards we have for today lots of spoilers as i said i know i know i just keep saying that i'm gonna do it weekly or uh i mentioned that i was gonna do it weekly but we just get so many cards guys we just get so many cards and when you're getting like 13 14 cards to talk about and a brand new leader and all this stuff it is worth making a video hopefully you all enjoy let me know what you think in the comments section down below and i'll see you all for the next one